Hello and welcome to the Capital Allocation Channel. So today I'm going to give you guys a market update, stocks, cryptos, commodities. And I've been doing a lot of thinking this weekend and thinking about the long term. How is everything going to play out in the long term? And this is one of my favorite quotes by Seth Klarman, billionaire investor. The single greatest edge an investor can have is a long term orientation. And so I'm trying to get some perspective today, kind of take a step back and look at what's going to transpire on the long term and try to take advantage of these moves, what's happening in the short term. So to look at the S&P 500, we broke out of this channel towards the upside. Very bullish move, snapped straight above this channel. Not much to say here definitely changing the direction of momentum for the S&P 500. Looking at the 10-year yield, settling here right above 2%. Looks good here. Uh, we've got a little bit of relief. So I think we're going to stabilize here uh, for the short term. Uh, so this, this is a good place to be, in my opinion. VIX, I had mentioned... We kind of had a triple top up here, reached this level up around 37. And I was suggesting maybe that would be a top, at least for now. That does seem to be the case. Huge reduction in volatility, so that will obviously allow the algorithms and all these banks and funds uh, to put on more longs in the market when this volatility is more in a normal range. Put call ratio. So the put call ratio has dropped much less puts in the market. So what that tells me is there is less protection on the downside. So <clears throat> when you have a lot of puts in a certain location, it's hard for the market to go down below that. People don't want to pay those puts, these funds. They're not trying to pay these puts off. So you'll either go up a lot of times or be in a holding pattern until a lot of these puts expire. That does seem to be the case. So with this uh, massive bullish move on the S&P, we'll have to see, obviously, what's going on with these geopolitical risks. Uh, but this particular data point is suggesting we could potentially get a small pullback but overall it does like look like the momentum is reversing in the market here dollar index so had a nice little double top here up around a hundred around 99 and starting to have a pullback here um, so nothing too major probably will come down consolidate in a range China. Now, this is pretty insane here. We had this kind of huge exponential move to the downside, uh, followed by this massive jump. This was over a 30% move in one day. And I was suggesting that's why, uh, especially if you're newer in these markets, and regardless, you're going to want to obviously not investing advice but I prefer to be hedged when you're seeing volatility and moves like 30 percent plus moves in one day um, there's a website called magic formula investing um, and this is a strategy by Joel Greenblatt uh, he wrote a few books I'll put a link in the description below I think that's one must-read book, in my opinion, if you want to be a serious investor. Um, and he basically stays hedged um, and had a great track record for returns here. Now, is this a bottom? That is the question. This particular index is down over 50%. Um, I think there are some opportunities in these foreign markets that people are overlooking while the S&P is still
based on the Buffett indicator, historically overvalued, absurdly overvalued for the S&P. Although I do think it has come down and there are opportunities in, uh, in value stocks, in uh, stocks with low debt, decent margins. Um, but those t stocks have tended to outperform, although they're more stable, that you don't have as many fluctuations. But at least that is my preference, picking up these things, staying hedged. Arc Innovation, okay. So still in a downtrend. We have this nice move towards the upside, but still haven't broken down this trend line. And if you look at this cloud, we're just steady heading down here. So I'd like to see more confirmation before I think these uh, particular tech stocks, uh, these high momentum stocks are going to be back into play. I would like to see a, uh, a higher low here. Okay, Bitcoin, like I said in the last video, I did expect a bounce due to these Bitcoin shorts. I think we're in a range here uh, with the upper bound being around 45,000, the lower being around probably 37 to 39. Yeah, maybe 37 to 45 here. And so we did have that bounce towards the upside. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what I'm seeing here with these shorts, the shorts have decreased. We've seen this before. They decrease. You get these smaller and smaller candles, and then you get a quick reversal. So we're finally getting these smaller candles. It does look like we could get a reversal and see shorts coming back and entering into this market, which could be uh, why we're getting this red candle. We could head back towards the downside and again, try and test this area. <clears throat> All right, Monero. Monero's been doing really well lately. We had this area with all these bottoming tails here came up had one last flush that had to go right below this previous area of support flushing everybody out of the market presumably before heading towards that upside uh, broke snapped straight above this trend line came back perfectly retested now we're coming up towards this previous resistance so we really have had really two higher lows here. We also have this twist on the Ichimoku cloud. <clears throat> so it does look like the momentum is coming into Monero as well as some of these other privacy coins. I'm sure you guys have seen Pirate Chain broke up above this previous uh, resistance here. Probably will come down and retest, but again we have this really a double bottom here and a higher low we also have a twist and we have not had this for a long time we were up here over uh, about three three dollars and forty cents and we've been in this down downtrend the entire time we're finally heading back towards the upside and I think this is an area that it makes sense if you're trying to use these in the real economy. Um, you know, it's difficult to use when these things are so volatile. Uh, but the more that we intentionally use these, the thing that I wanted to mention is with something like this technology, you need two components, right? So you need the currency component. Monero or pirate chain but in order to use this component what you need is you need a second component of entrepreneurship you need a group of small businesses that you can use to transact with in order to have goods and services to consume using this technology so 
speculating in the markets is one thing and it's great to make money but you're really just transferring money between people you're not creating any value there when you create value or where you create value is the network that you create and you need entrepreneurship and you need goods and services to exchange with uh, these type of coins in order to create the value so if you're thinking about obviously creating a small business um, we need the we need to build the network so uh, that's what I'm encouraging anyone to do if they so choose if that's if that's something they're interested in I think that's going to help uh, create the network effect and the value of these coins but between Monero and pirate chain <clears throat> these are looking good and uh, performing relatively well in relationship to Bitcoin. Hopefully they decouple from Bitcoin uh, because they really are two different things um, with two different purposes in my opinion. Um, we might get some pressure it, in the short term with, like I said, these Bitcoin shorts looking like they're going to increase. It could pull them down, but again, I'm thinking longer term and 10 years, where are these going to be? And I think uh, that depends on us. Darrow. Again, I had called. This looks like kind of like a head and shoulders. We broke down. I suggested we're going to come back up and test this neckline. And I do think that does appear to be the case. And so, uh, like I said, this one's really choppy. This is hard trade here. Uh, so I think we're coming up to test this area. Have we already kind of rolled off and heading towards the downside? Hard to say. Again, this is a little too choppy for my, uh, for me. Um, so, and again, if you look longer term, this was kind of the neckline from this previous uh, pattern here. And so we came up, tagged that, and heading towards the downside. So personally, I think the charts for Pirate and Monero look better here. But again, it's all personal preference. If you want to support this project, obviously, I don't give investment advice on this channel. And just kind of giving my thoughts on this. So I would never say don't support any of these projects. I fully encourage it, but I'm just, you know, I like people to make rational decisions and not emotional decisions or decisions based on uh, other people who are have a, an alternative agenda that are pushing things that maybe not in other people's best interests. So Haven, again, I had called that this area looked like maybe a kind of a retracement where we could get a bounce that was the case we did hit this resistance here though uh, so when I see a pattern like this I like to see it continue and break have a clear break above that previous high we did not achieve that here uh, and so you know are we heading back towards the downside this is this is tough here uh, what I would say is if you get into something like this, um, look at the, how these candles are forming. If you see some little doji candle followed by a bullish engulfing candle, it's likely going to go towards the upside. If you see this continue to trend down, and especially the key level is going to be really under around 280 to 290 if you break down below that that's tough business there but um, again it all depends on what your goals are and your time frame this is looking at a shorter time frame for this particular coin um, if you do a lot of research and you figure that in the longer term this is something you're interested in then by all means um, 
I'm just looking at the technicals for some of these. I can't, I don't have time to research every project and all of the intricacies. So ghost, ghost just kind of chopping around here. Um, actually, I, I prefer these things to be more stable. Um, and again, just to use them, it makes them easier to know kind of to have a st really money with money. You need a standard. You need kind of an understanding. What is the value of this uh, rather than the price of uh, shooting around? It can't it's hard to be money if that's the case. Um, and so we're kind of stable here. This is a, like a 25 percent um, uh, stake proof of stake reward. So definitely not bad there. Now, Epic Cash, guys. I'll be honest, I like the way this is looking here. And I've been warning on this for a while. Um, <clears throat> actually, I called it back here. I was saying, dang, this thing is... I saw the momentum. So I hope you guys took advantage of that. Uh, but after that move, I've been warning this thing is in a downtrend. But here, here finally, we're getting to an area where obviously nothing is certain, but if you can get the probabilities on your side look at this this thing is just leveling out you've got a tight trading range and then you're pushing up here so will we get a breakout towards the upside maybe maybe but anyway again do with this as you wish um, not investing advice obviously and Everything is going to be based on your personal situation. But will we get a pop here? I think we could. All right, guys, gold. So gold has had a nice pullback here. Um, the way I'm thinking about this now is clearly... Uh, JP Morgan and the banks have been caught manipulating precious metals prices for a long time. I think they have these things locked down. Um, I think they can put them anywhere they want. And longer term, I still like gold. And I think just for the fact of um, monetary catastrophe insurance as an insurance policy i like gold but as far as an inflation hedge i'm not sure that it's really um, the best thing out there just due to the fact that they've got this thing pinned down it looks like and uh, they're gonna make sure there's no way to escape from the inflation with the markets which they can at least control which i believe to be gold another thing about cryptos I think they don't mind cryptos because cryptos is a diversion of wealth from real assets from real inflationary something that will cause inflation into uh, digital assets which one they compete with gold so they're taking away pressure off of the gold price and I think um, they don't want gold going through the roof because that's going to make them look bad and put pressure on them to stop the policies which they're enacting all right but the other thing i think they want to divert it from real estate lumber oil uh, you know vehicles land real assets and so i think that's why it's being allowed it's kind of a diversion of wealth into digital form and I think it has its purpose but I think people are a little bit too well I'm just starting to think about it differently is I guess all I can say and personally I think I'm looking more into getting out of digital out of um, these type of assets and into assets in the real world in addition if you listen to um, people like Kiyosaki uh, Ken McElroy uh, 
Jason Hartman, they're really smart guys, and they teach about debt. I personally am a little bit scared of debt. I don't really – that's not my strategy yet. Um, it's definitely risky, but debt, I believe, is really a way to make a lot of wealth in a negative way interest rate environment if you can get mortgages for three percent and the inflation is you know really probably 15 percent or they're saying seven whatever it is uh, that's a way to build wealth so again just some thoughts on kind of a perspective of what cryptos are uh, i think they're a tool but i think you know things like real estate uh, cars, real assets are, I think, where to be in the next maybe uh, 10 years. Silver, kind of same story as gold. Pullback, I think they're manipulating the price. I think it's a good uh, monetary insurance policy, but uh, I think it's not going to really save people from inflation due to the fact that it's manipulated. Platinum. All right. Uh, one thought I had about platinum. If you look at the longer term chart. So platinum peaked up here over $2,200. Here we're sitting at just over a thousand. So we're about 50% of the all time high. So this thing is really down here. Um, the thing about platinum, it is more rare than gold, but much cheaper than gold right now. Uh, Russia makes about 40, you know, exports about 40% of the platinum. Uh, from my knowledge, and South Africa uh, exports about another 40%. So a lot of platinum is dependent on Russia exports. So uh, that's one thing. Another thing. It's a lot easier to store than something like silver. Um, and anyway, I just think platinum looks good to me right here with all of the uh, potential risks to the supply. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on platinum. Do you hold platinum? Um, is this overlooked? Another issue is uh, platinum and palladium are catalysts, right? And although governments are pretending like they're going to get away from fossil fuels, if you listen to Art Berman, um, basically all energy transitions are additive. You're likely not going to get rid of oil. What you're going to do is stop increasing the use of oil. And in addition to the amount you use, you're going to have renewables on top of that. In addition, if you're looking at kind of these carbon scrubbing technologies, platinum and palladium are a catalyst that obviously they're used in catalytic converters, but is there going to be more of a demand to basically use catalysts like platinum to scrub um, and, you know, um, reduce emissions, basically? I'm not sure about that. That's one thing I want to look into more. And um, I think it's interesting. So just my thoughts on that. WTI, we had some relief here. Um, pulled back. Looks like we're coming up again here. Um, medium term, short to medium term, we'll probably be in a range. I think longer term, we can expect this to go much higher. You can see... Uh, Saudi Arabia is considering, and I'm sure will eventually, if not sooner rather than later, accept uh, basically Chinese yuan, different currencies rather than just the petrodollar uh, in exchange for oil and countries around the world are de-dollarizing. So what is going to be the effect of that? A couple of things, but one thing is if other countries are going to use their own currencies and they start selling off bonds, if they, if dollars start coming back to the U S to buy up assets, to buy up land, real estate, all this, it could, 
exacerbate inflation here in the U.S., uh, but also long-term, uh, the price of oil and um, it's, they basically tell you, like, they want to increase the price to force the adoption of electric vehicles and that type of thing. So I think long-term you can expect this to go much higher. Short-term, hopefully this holds for a while and we can stay in a range here and keep uh, fuel, uh, you know, in a range where people aren't getting hurt too bad, where we don't go into an instant recession. Some of these oil producers are up a lot here. Um, this is a tough trade here, obviously. Um, the smart money was getting getting in way back here, so this isn't something I'm getting into now. I think it's just kind of overbought. Uh, so I, w I would like to see this normalize. But anyway, those are U.S. companies. I do think oil companies, non-U.S. oil companies, though, they have a lot higher dividends. Uh, this is PetroChina. Um, there's, um, in Brazil, Petrobras. Uh, there's other oil producers outside of the U.S. that I think could be of better value but um, obviously if you're interested in that that's just something you could look into copper man I really don't like the pattern on copper here this looks like a Wyckoff distribution to me we have this huge run up it's just chopping around but also we kind of have this cup so this is a tough one Obviously, with a cup and handle, that will project towards the upside. With the Wyckoff, you're looking at further downside here. Um, so what is this going to do? Probably stay in this range for a while. Uh, but again, I think this is um, somewhat similar to, to oil in a way. Uh, I think emerging markets there's going to be a lot of demand for copper I think there's worldwide as as bad as things seem right now uh, I think worldwide uh, the wealth is going to increase there's going to be a lot of demand for uh, materials like copper in emerging markets and personally I think that's the place to be couple of producers this is one of my top holdings here Rio Tinto personally I don't really care where this stock goes I hope it goes down because I'll just buy more and again this is kind of in a range here uh, we've got this twist towards the downside um, so we'll see where this goes but again this isn't something I'm trading this is something even though I'm holding it, I hope it goes down. It's got a 9% dividend now. Also, Rio Tinto, BHP, Valet is also decent. Um, obviously not stock suggestions. These are stocks that I hold, and therefore it's obvious that I like them. So there you go. Southern Copper, similar pattern. Looks like we're hitting up towards this previous resistance here. Um, personally, I don't buy Southern Copper. What I buy is a company called Grupo Mexico. And they are owners of Southern Copper, but they also own a lot of railways in Mexico. Uh, they have a pretty good dividend, too. And between the mining and the rail, um, Grupo Mexico is a stock that has done extremely well. <clears throat> uranium all right again i'm not in love with this pattern the smart money was getting in way back here uh, but uranium can be explosive and uh, we do have this green twist here so this is a tough one i mean do we blow up towards all time or towards these previous highs here hard to say 
definitely hard to say. Yeah, this is a tough one. People get chopped up in these type of markets. Uh, but I think long term, it's obvious the need for uranium. Um, so I think this is definitely one to keep your eye on. This could be a viable dip here. Um, but it's just tough to say. It's been choppy for so long here. There's definite resistance. Uh, but we do have the twist. So I think, again, this is something I'm thinking longer term um, and just kind of thinking about that perspective. Where will this be in 10 years? And I think it definitely has a good future here. So anyway, just my thoughts quick update guys um thank you all for watching if you stayed to the end i appreciate you guys i uh, hope everyone's doing well don't forget to like and subscribe if that's something you're interested in uh, give me any suggestions on something you want me to cover and i'd be happy to do that thanks everyone take care and i'll see you in the next one